Hi friend, Dr. Renee Tucker here. Hey, listen, you know, I usually sit in my car and because supposedly it's a better sound, who can say? And I picture you sitting with me and we're just chatting. And so since you're my dear friend, you don't mind if I vent, is that right? Because I'm gonna, okay, listen, here's what happened. An acquaintance of mine, I'm sorry, by the way, this show is about fusing hogs and osphos. So, all right, so what happened was an acquaintance of mine had some swelling, small swelling on the horse's hock, like finger size, half a finger size, a little tiny bit, all right, for about a week. Horse wasn't lame, but um, he called the vet out who did an x-ray, who then said, ah, the joint is fusing and gave a shot of osphos. Now, for the purposes of this uh, podcast, osphos is very similar to Tildren. Okay, kind of has the same mechanism of action. Why don't I, before I forget, go ahead and say that they pulled Tildren off the market for humans. And the number one uh, reason is because people reported chronic pain from Tildren. They pulled it off the human market and they threw it at the horses. Don't even get me started. But it's too late. I'm already started. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Let me talk about why this doesn't even make sense to give osphos for a fusing hog. All right. First of all, what's a fusing hog? You know, when I first heard this and I was in vet school, I think, or shortly afterwards, uh, I got the impression that that meant all the bones, or at least two of the bones, two of the layers of bones, because there's four joints technically in the hawk, okay? But so some of the bones were literally fused or like welded together, like they'd never move. That was my impression. And that's why I thought that made sense. All right, you know, if the body's going to fuse it together, well, let's just wait till that's done and all will be well. Turns out it doesn't happen like that. It turns out that fusing just means that it doesn't look like there's any joint space on the x-ray. So what that means is that the horse's body is just putting extra bone on the external or outside of the joint. So for example, if you just lay your hands on your own knee or ankle, any joint, right? If you just lay your hands there and kind of hold on tight, well, that would be what one would see on the x-ray where the hands are blocking the the joint but they're not really restricting it so much right because if you put your hands tight across your ankle you can still move your ankle okay it's going to have a little bit less um i don't know side to side movement a little less sway a little less give but it can still move okay so when we do a necropsy on a horse, on these horses that have supposed fused joints, what we see is this external bone makes it look fused on the outside of the joint, but on the inside, it's not fused at all. It's still a perfectly normal joint. Now maybe a little bit small, might have some you know, rough spots, but 80% of the time there's nothing happening abnormally on the inside of the hawk. It's just on the exterior, just like if you laid your hands on the exterior of a joint. Just like that, I'm serious. This whole thing is ridiculous. Okay, okay, I know some of you have had some experience with fusing joints. I've heard lots and lots of stories and worked with horses with this before. Um, There are times when if you give the horse time to fuse the hawk, that the horse does become more sound. I've seen people just put their horse out to pasture for a year and the horse is more sound. And I've seen people ride their horse kind of more roughly, but they use butte so the horse isn't feeling it for about a year. And in in both those cases, I've seen where the x-rays do look, again, externally like they're fused and the horse is more sound. And there's been way more times where people have tried to do that. I've known someone tried to do that for 10 years. <laughs> Not kidding. It was 10 years. She says, it never happened. She's freaking hilarious. But it didn't happen. And there's a lot of stories of that as well. 
Now you can use other drugs to try to make this happen, but I particularly want to talk about Osphos. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, listen. Here's a little story of how the body works with bone. All right. They are osteoblasts, that's with a B, and there's osteoclasts with a C. Okay, osteo means bone, right? So what happens is the osteoclasts clear the older layers of bone, maybe the ones that need to be repaired, and the osteoblasts build the new bone on top of it. This is really similar to if you're rebuilding a street or a highway. You don't just pile more asphalt on top of it. You actually have to clear the old away, just, you know, an inch or whatever. And then you lay down the new asphalt. So this is exactly what the body does. You got the osteoclasts clear, and then the osteoblasts come behind them and build. So, you tell me, why would you want to give osphos? Because here's the mechanism of action of osphos. Osphos and children block the osteoclasts, right? So because the clasts cannot clear with osphos or children, then the body cannot build. It won't just build over, you know, bone that needs to be removed, right? Think if you kept doing that to Ohio, you just kept piling more and more asphalt on there over time it'd be like 10 feet tall so the body cannot just add more bone it has to clear the old stuff before it puts in the new and the body's constantly doing this bones constantly being regenerated so everything is all of our cells are constantly being renewed um, so if you wanted to help something fuse theoretically you would want more bone right but the body will not put down more bone unless it can clear the old layer it just won't so it's not going to work to theoretically fuse the horse at all i would like veterinarians to start using their brain can i just say that look at the package insert i've just i've had it this is no good this us fast stuff stays in the system a minimum of four months it's affecting every bone in the body there's warning labels in the in the package insert for fractures well that would make sense right you screwed up the whole body's mechanism of fixing the bone and 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 veterinarians are just giving this willy-nilly oh you know it's got a swelling let's give some osphos what the heck is going on Oh, <laughs> I hope you're appreciating my ranting because I just, there's always a way to fix stuff, people. There really, really is. If you have enough time, okay, you can't fix everything on a 35-year-old horse. I get that. But the key is to find out why is the horse doing this. So in this example, why would the horse be adding extra bone? Well, horses usually add extra bone on the ex external parts of the outside of any joint, including the hocks, for stability and or support. So all that means is that there's many different reasons why the hock would have mm, asymmetrical forces on it. So the hock and most of the joints in the, in the legs major weight is from the body of the horse on those legs straight down to the ground right the pressure on all the joints should be really straight vertical down for the most part okay now if there's lots of different reasons so here's a couple if there's for whatever reason lax or loose ligaments decreased or asymmetrical muscle the hoof trim has the wrong angle or crooked angle there are there's sacroiliac issues or there's pelvic misalignments 
That's just to name a few possibilities. Any of those things can cause the pressure of along the hock joint, instead of being straight vertical, to become a little bit crooked or sheer or too much pressure on the inside versus the outside or vice versa. All right, it's just gonna be asymmetrical pressure that shouldn't be there. And so that causes instability in the joint because there's too much pressure on one side than the other. So the body's like, "Uh uh-oh, we need some help here. Let's put in more bone. That's all. So they add more bone to the outside of the joint to help it hold on. It's a helpful thing for the horse. That's why sometimes if you just wait another year, the body has enough time to add in some extra bone and it looks fused. Again, it's not really most of the time internally, there's no fusion. It just looks like it externally on the x-ray. And I appreciate that if the horse is sound, that's cool. And you know, if, if you're at the end of the rope and you want to try this, I appreciate that. Okay. I just want, I just, sorry, everyone. Yeah. You get me in the car. Okay. I just want the vets to stop saying a veterinarian. I am at the end of my rope. So there's no other answer than fuse the hawks. Can they not just say, I am at the end of what I know to do other than try to fuse the hawks. There may be some other answers out there. Here's my list of alternative practitioners that I know of that maybe could have some ideas. Where's that? Come on, people. Let's start doing it. It would be so awesome. Okay. Sorry. This was really ranting. Uh, It just obviously happened a few days ago that I heard about this and it just shocked me because it so doesn't make any sense. All right. One more thing on what vets typically offer for fusing hawks. Also, that doesn't make any sense is to give joint fluid, right? So if theoretically you're trying to fuse a joint and you've been taught that fusing means internally, right? The whole thing is going to just weld itself together. Why would you give more joint fluid? That would prevent the fusing. Okay, so that that doesn't make sense. Now, there's nothing wrong with trying some joint fluid. Okay, and that can be oral products, intramuscular or intravenous injections, or direct joint injections. It's okay to try these things. Sometimes you, you know, you're stuck in a spot where you need to try this to see either diagnostically what's going on or might what might work for the horse. So if you're trying to fuse a joint, theoretically, and you give joint injections and the horse gets better, that's wonderful. But that's telling you the joint is not trying to fuse. It's trying to move. So when you gave more joint fluid stuff, the horse was happy about it. It's like, oh, yes, I do need more joint fluid stuff because I want to move this joint. I hope that made sense. You might have to re-listen to that one. Um, The idea that I'd really like to get across, as always, is there's always a reason that the body is doing stuff. You want to find that reason and fix that. And the second thing I want to get across is... If you could share this with your veterinarians, please come back to the light side, come away from the dark side and and just rethink because we're all really smart and we're all trying to do the best thing. And sometimes we just get stuck in this. Oh, I have a shot that might work. And uh, let's stop that. All right. Thank you all for listening. I'd love to see your comments and I appreciate you guys. I'll talk to you later.